Hi, I'm Shaylee, for those of you who are brand new here. If you've been here for a while, you know who I am. You've heard me talk about family vlogging in the past, but I wanted to make another video about it today because recently, in the last few months, I did share and open up in detail about some of the dangers that I experienced being a daily family vlogger and why I decided to get off of the platform. But I wanted to share a little bit more insight into it because if you're anything like me, you used to look at family vloggers like they were the ultimate, ultimate. Family vlogging was cool back in 2014-ish when I started. Around the time that my channel was a year old, I decided to make a daily vlogging channel. Now, daily vlogging is filming your life Monday through Sunday, seven days a week. There are no breaks, especially back then. We were very hardcore about it. You get no breaks every single day, which obviously isn't healthy in any profession to never have a break, but uh, especially when you're filming your life because there's no separation of your life and your content. Something I feel like I need to mention right off the bat because I know somebody is going to say something is that my channel, my daily vlogging channel, only had 12,000 subscribers. So I was a small channel. That doesn't mean that I didn't put in the work every single day though. I was up editing late every day to make sure that that video was live the next day. And then you have to think about the next day's content as you're editing that day. And you have to kind of like manage and juggle all of that. And for a while, I feel like I did it really well. And then it came to this point where it wasn't working, okay? It wasn't working because how could it work? It's not healthy to be showing every aspect of your life every single day, but I tried so hard. I tried so hard to make it happen. My husband hated it. He hated it. And I don't think I really realized that too many years later because he acted like he loved it. I think for both of us, the reason we wanted to even start in the first place was the community aspect. We wanted to be friends with these family vloggers that we watched. We wanted to be connected in that community. We wanted that experience of being a part of something so cool. And for me back then, my thoughts on family vlogging was like, this is going to make history. It definitely has, not in every positive way, but it's made history. And not like I'm gonna use this as an excuse or anything, but from the very moment I found out I was pregnant until I had my daughter, I had this, and not this exact camera, but I was filming, right? I filmed the entire experience from 15 weeks pregnant leading up to her birth. And then I continued to film till my second pregnancy and then after I had my son. So this in my face has always been what I thought was normal. There was no questioning it. And I know it's crazy now because my views on family vlogging have shifted like 180, okay? I don't agree with anything that I once believed. I'm pretty much like anti-family vlogging now. I'm on the opposite side of the spectrum because I've been through it. I've seen what it did to my family, what it's done to other families. And we're seeing now how detrimental it is for these a lot of these kids who have been born into family vlogging who are now getting older, you know, they're in their preteens and they don't want to be shown anymore. But the families that have been showing them they're such a big part of their channel. They're such a big asset to their channel. You can't just take your kids off of your channel once you get to a certain level. Everything is a business, everything. And your family, it becomes your business. We barely ever really made money with family vlogging. For me, it was always like, these are our memories. We have all these memories to cherish and to have. Obviously, I didn't need those memories public, but for some reason, that was my reasoning at the time. So we started vlogging in November of 2014 and basically ended in the fall of 2017. So it was a good four year period. And I wouldn't say that I posted every single day, but I was pretty consistent because I was trying to grow my channel. I wanted to be a famous vlogger. I went to all the conferences. I got to meet 
all the bloggers. Because I have been kind of doing my own thing for the last few years and I haven't been making family content, I'm definitely more far removed now from like the family vlogging atmosphere, but I still have a lot of family vlogger friends and I still know a lot of family vloggers, especially the people who joined around the same time frame that I did. And most of those people that joined in that time frame aren't doing it anymore. All the larger channels are because they've made it into a profitable business that they can't escape from now. But I feel like for a lot of the channels that were like my size and somewhere in between and those numbers, we don't do it anymore. Number one, it wasn't beneficial. And number two, we see the dangers. Like I told you, I made a previous video talking more about the dangers of YouTube, but basically to summarize it, I found my kids on some predatory playlists on YouTube, which means I found videos of my kids which were meant to be very innocent, videos of them in their diapers, um, videos of them eating food but with no shirt on. I mean, just babies being babies because babies have their clothes off most of the time. I never thought twice about it. Not even twice, honestly. And I know in my last video people were like, you are very naive. I was. I admit it, right? Uh, but we're human, we make mistakes, and there's grace, thank God for that, because I went through a phase of beating myself up once I found out that my kids were on these playlists and that they were being viewed by predators, both female and male, in such a disgusting way. It revolted every part of me and made me never want to do it again. But that was literally this small portion of it when there was so much toxicity all around it as a whole. The biggest thing is you cannot pick up a camera every day and expect yourself to make content when you're not okay. And for me, and I'm very transparent about it now, I struggle with mental health. I always have. Picking up a camera every day, even on your low days of depression and just being like, hey guys, how are you? Follow me today, blah, 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 blah. It's fake. It's, it's just fake. And I know that we think that there's no harm done in, in being fake or maybe changing the appearance of things sometimes to make them seem more presentable. But doing that long term is actually very harmful. It's not only harmful to you, but it's harmful to the people that you're influencing. The people that you're showing, hey, this is my life and this is what it's like, when in reality, it's not like that. It's not like that. For me, it was like, Hey husband, make sure you're filming today because I need vlog content. And he was like, okay, I will. Not wanting to do it and I forced him to anyway. Um, Cause it was all about that content. Whatever kind of content you can get, you just get it and that's it. Like you have to have a video that day. Whether you want to or not, something has to be posted the next day. So figure it out. And our tagline of our vlogs was real and authentic vlogs when half the time I didn't even want to be on camera talking. <laughs> when you're opening up your life, especially your daily life, to so many people, it gives those people a reason to think that they can like comment on your life and every little choice that you make. And after a while, it, it really gets to you. It wasn't good for my mental health. And even if you're watching a vlogger and they seem like they don't struggle with mental health or they seem like they have their life all together, which, spoiler alert, none of us do. But even if they seem that way, it's a facade, it has to be, because there's no other way that you can show your life, promote products and make money and have it always be authentic. Also, my kids couldn't consent and I put them on camera. If anything, I feel like my story can give you an understanding, like a tiny understanding of what it's like for these humongous channels that have millions and millions of subscribers. Because if someone of my size, a small size of 12,000 subscribers had these things going on, you can only imagine what it was like for them. I had people that found my number and called me constantly. People who would stalk me on Facebook and use that like calling option that they have on Facebook. I would get calls at two, three, four a.m. from people. And it was always people like trying to get me to help them through something. I'm depressed, I need help, whatever. And it was just like, I don't know you. 
And at that time in my life, I felt like it was my responsibility almost to step in and help them. I didn't know what boundaries were. People found my address. Now, it wasn't hard because I've made a lot of dumb mistakes in my life and I've showed the front of my house and the layout of my house and all of those things that it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out where you live when you show details of your house. It just doesn't. So we were getting packages from people all the time, random packages to my kids, uh, Christmas gifts to them, birthday gifts, things like that. And it was always anonymous. Even though the gifts were nice, it was a very violating feeling knowing that people knew where I lived. I set myself up for all of that because we would vlog around our house, parks near our house, swimming pools near our house. I mean, not a care in the world. I just want to go back to Shaylee five years ago and be like, please stop. What are you doing? And I did have my parents, they tried to warn me throughout all of that and I thought I knew everything and I clearly didn't. But like I said, there's so many different aspects to family vlogging that are very toxic, especially if you're doing it on a daily basis. It's just not healthy. There should always be some kind of balance between work life and content life. Even now, I create videos maybe once, maybe twice a week, depending on the week. And I've taken my family out of it pretty much completely because for me, I didn't know what the line was. So I needed to take them out completely to figure out how to not involve them with my channel anymore. And I feel like it worked out for me. I mean, yes, I lost a lot of viewers and my channel has never really like recovered fully since, but I'm so grateful that I am not a large family vlogging channel that now has to decide between putting my kids on the internet and making money. Because I do feel like that's where a lot of vloggers are right now. I think everybody knows how toxic this is. Everybody knows how detrimental this is. Everybody knows that this is an issue, including psychologists. And yet so many vloggers aren't getting off the platform. They aren't taking their kids off of the platform. And the reason is they're too far in at this point. It's like, what can you do for a living when you make as much money as some of these people do what can you do aside from making videos to make that kind of money again? I have this interesting perspective because even though I've never been a huge channel, I've had friends that are huge channels and I've gotten so much advice through the years and just, I don't know, just like that kind of like experience of being around a lot of larger channels, even though I was never one and, and hearing their perspectives. It's been really fascinating. It's been really really interesting and I remember one time being on the phone with a daily vlogging couple that has a pretty significantly large channel now and I asked them I said what do you do on the days when you don't want to pick up the camera because you're having a really hard day like how do you film do you guys never have bad days or is this just my imagination because I feel like every time you guys post something it's happy and positive and here I am over here struggling all the time so what is it and uh, they said, we fake it. You have to fake it. You can't really make content every day when you're being real, when you're allowing yourself to feel everything that's, that's going around you, you know? You can't really make content every day and expect yourself to be in a good mood every day. So I've always found it fascinating, you know, just, hearing how a lot of these larger channels have made it work for them. And you know what? No judgment. I never want my videos to feel like they're being judgy or holier than thou or anything. I just think it's time that we like wake up and realize that this isn't healthy, this isn't right, and that our children deserve better. They need us to protect them. They need our guidance, they need our safety, and they need our security. It's not healthy to have conversations with your kids when this is out in front of your face. It's not healthy that your first response is to pick up a camera and film when they get hurt or film when something goes wrong. Um, it's not healthy. And I never thought that it wasn't healthy until I've allowed myself to get out of that environment and to realize 
that this was causing a split in my family. This was causing my marriage trouble. This was causing me to feel even worse about myself. And so for me, family vlogging wasn't worth it. It wasn't. And that's basically why I stopped family vlogging. So I wanna end this video by saying, even if you disagree with how people live their lives, like family vloggers, coming after anybody for the way that they live is never, ever, ever effective or helpful. Don't come at people with a place of hate, come at people with love because that's really the only way that people change their mindset about things like this. And it's the only way that they are able to really see this for what it is. Thanks for watching this video. I hope that you guys have a great day and I'll see you in my next one.